Welcome to uh, Radio Frequency IC Design Lecture. Uh, this is Lecture 8, Unit 2, and we uh, will be discussing image reject receivers in today's class. So uh, to just recap the, uh, the previous class, uh, we discussed about dual uh, down conversion receiver, where the problem of uh, image rejection and channel selection, the trade-off between uh, both of them, uh, image rejection and channel selection is resolved up to a level by employing you know, two levels of down conversion and thereby we call the uh, the transceiver the receiver architecture as dual if heterodyne receiver and uh, there also we have seen that uh, yeah uh, if you look at the spectrum at various points we will understand that uh, channel selection is progressively done at two points and thereby uh, images uh, and uh, the interferers both are uh, both are uh, removed uh, in uh, in some good level, right? Uh, then uh, we started discussing about this image reject receivers, where the idea of image reject receiver is uh, to suppress uh, image, uh, not by filtering, uh, to suppress image. So, how to uh, suppress image is what we need to uh, see today, and thereby, um, so image reject receivers typically avoid this trade-off between this image rejection and channel selection because image rejection is not done by uh, this one uh, not done by any filtering rather we uh, employ a technique called as 90 degree phase shift and uh, with the help of that technique we will try to cancel images and we will try to re retain the signal component so uh, in that line we uh, also discussed about 90 degree phase shift operation uh, we saw how a sine wave or a cosine wave will respond to a 90 degree phase shift and later we uh, discussed uh, that as Hilbert transform shift by 90 degrees nothing but Hilbert transform and we also say uh, saw how the spectrum uh, how the spectrum is uh, changed by uh, this 90 degree phase shift operation and uh, finally we saw that if you cascade to 90, uh, 90 degree phase shift operation that is two Hilbert transform will always give you the negation of the signal so that is a point where we stopped and today we'll continue the discussion uh, now, in today's class, uh, the main idea is to uh, get into the architecture of image reject receivers. But before that, as we were discussing about 90 degree phase shift operation in the previous class, let us see the, um, some of the methods to implement this 90 degree phase shift. So, uh, let us see how to implement a 90 degree phase shift operation. There are uh, different methods, different uh, techniques are uh, usually uh, done. Uh, let us see uh, uh, some of the techniques, what we can use here to uh, implement an N degree phase shift operation. So one very common technique is, uh, say if you have a signal, uh, say if you call this as V in, and if you want to uh, have an N degree operation, uh, typically what we can do is we can actually uh, use passive components, uh, capacitors and resistors, uh, say with the values C1 and R1. And similarly, uh, if I take here R and C components, right? So uh, from, uh, so the, the signal which you want to uh, make an N degree phase shift, uh, make, uh, uh, two RCCR networks and say uh, this will provide you one output and this will provide you another output V out one and V out two. Now, uh, can you guys try to write the transfer function of this? Uh, so when I say transfer function, um, there are two outputs, right? So uh, you can try for V out one by V in and V out two by V in. Both transfer functions you can write. So when you write the transfer function, write the um, yeah, write the magnet, uh, write the transfer function, and also try to uh, find the angle of the transfer function. So can you can you guys try that?
So write both v out one by v in. Uh, let me write here v out one by v in and v out two by v. In. You can find both. Yeah, Niranjan, are you there, Niranjan? Yes, sir. Yeah, Niranjan, can you just tell me uh, what is V out one by V in? I'm trying, sir. Oh, all right, okay. Vinay Kumar. Vinay Kumar, are you there? Okay, yeah. So, mm, V out 1 by, yeah. Rekshak, I was asking uh, the transfer function, you have written the magnitude. Uh, okay, so V out 1 by V in is, S into R1 C1 divided by 1 plus S into R1 C1 and V out 2 by V in is 1 by 1 plus S R1 C1. Right. So this is uh, the transfer function at both the outputs. And uh, yes, I am seeing uh, Rohit Sagar uh, Sarvesh. Yes, yes. So uh, now if you look or uh, if you look at the circuit itself, you can identify um, what the transfer function, what I wrote on the top, that is V out one by V in is same as a high pass uh, filter transfer function. So I'll just write this as uh, H of HPF of S, which is S uh, R1 C1 divided by one plus S R1 C1. And similarly, this one, I'll write it as the low pass filter transfer function, which is one by one plus S R1 into C1. Now, if I try to write the angle of this, uh, the high pass filter phase, uh, numerator phase is 90 minus denominator phase is tan inverse omega R1 C1. Right. Similarly, if I write here the low pass filter transfer function, which is numerator phase is 0 minus denominator phase is tan inverse omega R1 C1. Right. Now, uh, so if I take this angle uh, high pass filter minus this angle of low pass filter, I will get that that will be equal to 90 degree or pi by 2 uh, for all frequencies. Right. So uh, this is one common way uh, to implement a 90 degree phase shift operation by using a RC CR network. Uh, because we know that uh, both will have, so uh, now this is possible, this exact 90 degree phase shift is possible and that depends on even the, the component values also. So how far we can get two capacitors and two resistors of uh, same value, it all depends on that. But this is one of the uh, one of the methods or one, of, one way actually to, uh, uh, one way to implement 90 degree phase shift operation, right. Now, uh, if you look at the outputs, V out 1 and V out 2, uh, both are differ, both differs by an, by an angle of 90 degree, right? If you look at the output, we will understand that. So, uh, if you look at the angle, we will understand that. So, we can also say that V out 2 is uh, the Hilbert transform. V out 2 is the Hilbert transform of V out 1, right? So this is one uh, common way uh, using passive components. This is one common way actually to implement uh, 90 degree phase shift operation, right? Now, uh, 
we will see uh, one more way and we will see how we will employ these methods in Hartley receiver. We will see shortly. Uh, yes, Rekshak, one is high pass and other is low pass. If only capacitor or one only inductor, uh, all right. So with only one capacitor or only, uh, only one inductor. Mm. All right, so uh, let, let us see how we implement this 90 degree phase shift operation because uh, again, um, the use of inductors, especially in ICs, the use of inductors are, I will not say limited, but we will uh, see that a need. Uh, see if there is a specific need of inductor only, we will incorporate inductors into ICs because getting inductors on, into ICs is not that easy. Right, so uh, just to uh, get a 90 degree phase shift operation, uh, definitely if there is there are other possibilities, we'll definitely see that. Right. Yeah. Okay, so uh, at this I am telling this is one method actually to implement 90 degree phase shift. Yes. Now, um, this 90 degree phase shift also can be uh, obtained. Uh, if I go for this method, say for example, I have the RF signal here. Let me mark it as DRF, uh, which is centered at uh, say cos omega, hmm, some center frequency, uh, cos omega CT. Uh, now I am actually using uh, two paths. So generally we call this as two arms. Uh, probably you can identify this kind of structure. You would have seen definitely this you would have seen in your uh, communication system course. One arm, uh, we'll use a local oscillator which provides uh, cos omega LOT and another arm, we'll use another uh, local oscillator but with a phase shift of 90 degree, sine omega LOT, right? So this will definitely give you uh, one as an in-phase component, we generally call it as I, and other as the quadrature component, we generally call it as Q. So this we call it as I arm, the arm which gives you the in-phase component, and this is the Q arm, the, uh, the arm which gives you the quadrature component. Right. Now, uh, I hope this structure is very familiar to you, right? Uh, you would have seen this kind of uh, structure in your communication system course. Now, what I'm going to do here is I have the um, RF signal, which is centered at omega CT. And now that is taken into two arms and each are mixed. Each uh, signal is mixed with cos omega LOT in one arm and sin omega LOT in the other arm. Now, uh, let us study this uh, in two ways. So because what, what we are, um, this, this discussion is actually leading to image reject receivers. So before doing image reject receivers, I, I'm considering uh, the different cases in a 90 degree phase shift operation. Uh, let me explain what I'm trying to do here. Uh, so what I'll do first is I'll uh, consider uh, two cases here. One is I'll consider the high side injection case. So high side injection is nothing but when the local oscillator frequency is greater than uh, the input signal frequency, omega LO greater than omega C. That is one case. And the second case is called as low side injection, where your omega yellow is lesser than omega C. So uh, we will shortly understand why uh, we are considering both the cases. Uh, or I'll just give you a hint. Uh, so whenever, uh, whenever we consider a signal uh, in a receiver, uh, you will have signal component, you will have uh, you will have the local oscillator component and you will have image component also. So the idea is to suppress image. Now, uh, say for example, uh, this is your local oscillator frequency and you have, because of high side injection, if you have signal on this side, definitely image will be on the other side, right? So uh, when you consider, uh, when you consider the location of local oscillator, for signal, this is high side injection because omega LO is greater than your signal component, but for image, this is actually a low side injection, right? Because since image is on the other side and the local oscillator frequency is lesser than the image signal, for image, this is actually a low side injection. So we are considering both the cases before we go, uh, before we go and discuss the image reject receivers. I hope uh, so far I, I made some clarity. 
can i get your response in the chat box is that is, is this clear what i am are you getting a thought flow all right okay uh, okay thank you thank you for responding so uh, the two cases are hsi and lsi and why we are considering these two cases is because uh, for signal uh, for signal if it is hsi for image it will be definitely lsi or the or vice versa so that is why we are considering both the cases so let me first go to the first case uh, case 1 where i am uh, considering hsi so hsi is uh nothing but your log loss rate frequency is greater than uh signal component right so in that case how can i define the intermediate frequency so intermediate frequency is defined as since omega lo is greater than omega c intermediate frequency can be defined as omega lo minus omega c so that is the first step i define what is intermediate frequency which is omega lo minus omega c now now let me take uh yeah so uh, all this explanation i am doing with respect to this diagram where i have a signal component which is at omega c and that is multiplied by uh, cos omega lot in one branch and sin sin omega lot in the other branch in time domain so in frequency domain what happens is actually convolution so uh, let me consider uh, the signal component here signal component is centered at omega c and here it is centered at minus omega c and uh, if i represent uh, in this form say it is a modulated component uh, this is uh, i'll also uh, consider that the amplitude of this is a a is the amplitude both are uh, the signal components at omega c and minus omega c with amplitude of a now since i assumed uh high side injection uh, when i draw the uh, log loss oscillator component here so since omega lo is larger i'll uh, make sure that it is towards right side uh, to ensure that high side injection is happening so this is omega lo and on this side i have minus omega lo now uh, i am treating the upper arm first so uh, the signal is multiplied by cos omega lot that is why i have taken two impulses at omega l and minus omega lo each with an amplitude of 1 by 2 because i did not put any yeah let me uh, write this as the vrf signal is a cos omega ct right uh okay so uh, it is uh, with a uh, half amplitude at omega l and minus half uh, sorry half at minus omega l also right so now uh now what happens uh, in the at this block in the mixing block time domain it is multiplication so frequency domain it is uh, so i am actually considering a modulated signal uh, so say i'll just write it as vrf with an amplitude of a right it is a modulated signal it is not a pure cosine signal it is a modulated signal that is why i have even uh, used this uh, representation now uh, now what we wh how we will get the uh, result at this point i am is so to get the i am result i have to actually do convolution operation i hope you are familiar with the convolution operation so uh, typically uh, how we how we will do convolution on on uh, pictorial is we will actually uh take this um, cosine component and we will actually uh try to yes nikhil amplitude should be a by 2 for what uh you meant for cosine wave or nikhil can you respond uh, sir for the first graph written uh, the amplitudes have to be a by 2 this If one is yes sir No, no. This is not cosine wave. I'm just taking the amplitude as a. Is that fine? Okay. 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 Yeah. It, I, I'm not. Uh, it is not. It is not a pure tone. It is a modulated signal. Okay, sir. Okay. And for my, like for ease of doing things, I'm just taking it as a. Okay. Yeah. Yes, Now uh, I hope. Yeah. I, I th thank you, Nikhil. So I hope you can. You know how to do a convolution operation on pictorially. So can you try and get the components? 
so uh, if when you do convolution operation you will actually get four components you will get two sum components and you will get two difference components as in an ideal uh, normal mixer case so uh, you can uh, you can uh, think of eliminating the high frequency components or the sum components and we will look only at the difference components because even we are looking for the difference component only we are doing down conversion operation right so we will have uh, the result here which is at uh, zero now can you guys tell me what are the uh, components coming so uh, the the normal way is we'll do, do shifting uh, sorry we'll do reversing then shifting and then we'll multiply and then we'll get the result pictorially right so that means uh, i'll just list out the components here the first component will be minus omega lo minus omega c then you will get minus omega lo plus omega c then you will get omega lo minus omega c and you will get omega lo uh, plus omega c right this will be the uh, four components when you do convolution operation here and uh, these can be written as if i take minus common this will be uh, this component uh, so i'll be eliminating these two sum components and whatever i am left out is the difference component uh, so omega lo minus omega c is one and if i take minus uh, outside it is um, omega lo minus omega c right so i'll have one component here at minus omega lo this should not be confused i am just rewriting this as minus of omega lo minus omega c so this is the component here and on the other side we have omega lo minus omega c and now both will have the same shape but amplitude is actually a by 2 and a by 2 this is the i component so this is uh, this is the i arm component similarly uh, you can try for the uh, the other component let it be here so if i do the uh, other arm component uh, again i'll take uh, the signal here zero minus omega c uh, omega c this is your signal component uh, it is high side injection so uh, we have to take sin omega l of t on the other side so this is omega l o and this is minus omega lo this is with an amplitude of minus j by 2 and this is with an amplitude of j by 2 again you have to perform the operation uh, so if you look at the operate if you look at the different components uh, we will have um, what are the components coming in uh, let me just write it here minus omega lo minus omega c minus omega lo plus omega c uh, omega lo minus omega c and omega lo plus omega c right in that i'll eliminate uh, the uh, some components some components are this so i'll just eliminate this one and this one so uh, the difference is when you write uh, this um, the first case where you have uh, cosine cos omega lot multiplied with your signal uh, there is no change right because uh, your co co cos omega lot is having two impulses at half uh, at omega lo and minus omega lo so your spectrum will not change your spectrum will be same but it will be down converted with the amplitude of a by 2 but now since it is multiplied with sine you have to look at the component and the amplitude whether it is uh, getting negated whether it is having a uh, complex amplitude or not that we have to verify uh, so uh, the result will be at zero uh, yeah so the components at minus omega lo <laughs> first component is anyway not there second component is minus omega lo plus omega c that uh, corresponds to minus of omega lo uh, minus omega c 
and that will have a positive that will have a uh, amplitude of sorry j into a by 2 this will be the amplitude if both are a now uh, the last component is not there uh, now uh, we have minus j by 2 mm, so omega lo uh, sorry omega lo minus omega see that is so the, the, then you will get uh, the component here which is omega lo minus omega c uh, that will have a that will have an amplitude of this one so it is minus j into a by 2 <clears throat> i hope this operation is clear what i have done uh, so this is i arm and this is actually the q arm result so we have taken high self injection as the first case uh, and that is where omega l is greater than omega c then we uh, did the operation here uh, the the signal multiplied by cos omega l t to get the i arm components and the signal multiplied by sin omega l t to get the q arm components you will get four components in that the some components we rejected there itself uh, and that will be definitely done using a low pass filter in the complete architecture so you will get, uh, you will get uh, something like this in uh, i arm and in the q arm mm, is this clear is this operation clear can i get response okay uh, all right now can you uh, can you make one observation here uh, how this i am and q am components are related so i am and q am shows the if spectrum uh, so if spectrum is emerging actually basically from the upper arm which is a i am and the lower arm which is a q am yes uh, they are uh, they are with a phase difference of 90 degree yeah so that uh, i'll make that observation here so the observation is uh, during uh, so why we are doing this step by step is uh, this discussion if it is clear then your image reject receiver will be uh, very easy to understand so during hsi the spectrum which is emerging from the if spectrum uh, which is emerging from the lower arm is the hilbert transform of upper arm so this point uh, is to be noted so during hsi high side injection the if spectrum emerging from the lower arm lower arm is actually the q arm so i'll write this as lower arm that is the hilbert transform of the upper arm so i am is the upper arm right so if this is clear uh, you can try uh, the same with lsa low side injection and get the spectrum of uh, if spectrum at q arm uh, i arm and q arm can you guys try that so that is our case 2 case 2 is lsi so the first thing is uh, we will write lsi means omega lo is less than omega c uh, thereby i'll define the intermediate frequency as omega c minus omega l if it is lesser we de always define intermediate frequency as omega c minus omega lo now uh, correspondingly uh, we will uh, have uh, the i am and q am components uh, say this is minus omega c and this is omega c so here i have the component having amplitude of a each now uh, since it is low side injection uh, the local oscillator frequency is uh, lesser than the signal frequency so i'll mark uh, somewhere towards this side and towards this side with omega lo and minus omega lo both with an amplitude 1 by 2 so if you do the operation uh, that will directly result in components here 
uh, so you'll get sum and difference component uh, i'll di directly write that out of the four components uh, this will be omega c minus omega l right uh, each with an amplitude a by 2 this is for the i arm so this is i am similarly uh, let me write it here this is i am component now if i write for q arm uh, i can repeat the same thing uh, so i i request you to perform and see how the components are coming so this is with amplitude of a now uh, in the q arm uh, you have the sin omega lot component which is also uh, lesser than omega c so this is omega lo component and this is yeah it should be it should be clear that it should be lesser than omega c so this is omega lo component and this is sorry minus omega lo and this is omega lo component uh, with amplitude of minus j by 2 and j by 2 now you have you can perform the operation and uh, get the result and if you uh, look at the result you will understand that so we have components shifted to omega c minus omega lo and minus of omega c minus omega lo here we'll see that the component will be j into a by 2 and here you will see that the component is minus j into a by 2 so that will lead to the second observation uh, that is during lsi during low side injection uh, lower arm or the q arm is negative of hilbert transform of the upper arm if you look at the spectrum uh, comparing to the hsi case here also it is hilbert transform but it is negative of hilbert transform of upper arm so these two uh, points are the key points uh, how we uh, understand the operation of image reject receiver so during hsi the lower arm is having hilbert transform of the upper arm and during lsi the lower arm is having negative of the hilbert transform of the upper arm right i hope this is clear now i'll just uh, make those two observations here so with that we will uh, proceed further so during hsi uh, q component is hilbert transform of i component and during lsi q component is negative of hilbert transform of i component these two are very very important right uh, so far uh, any doubts you can ask otherwise yeah i can take questions uh, maybe after 5 uh, minutes okay so uh, what we'll do now is uh, let me I, i don't know how how far you you guys followed what we discussed uh, today we just discussed about 90 degree phase shift operation uh, through a circuit and uh, by this by using two mixers uh, each arm uh, with uh, cos omega lot and sin omega lot and we have considered two cases hsi and lsi and we have seen the if spectrum evolving from uh, evolving in both the cases hsi and lsi and we made these two observations so because this is actually the key for image reject receiver so uh, so what i will uh, give now is uh, whatever i said as image reject receiver image reject receiver also uses this 90 degree phase shift operation uh, so this is the rf uh, the point where rf signal is received 
and then uh, we have uh, two mixers which is giving you cos omega lot and sin omega lot so far in the previous cases here we did not consider any image now we have to actually consider image so uh, this will give you uh, one i component but this i component will definitely have a signal component and an image component right? this is the first thing to understand because uh, we haven't employed any filters we have just done one down conversion so if the down conversion is happening definitely images are also there as uh, as per our discussion before as per the discussion of heterodyne receivers image components will be there now uh, in the discussion we did not consider image now we are actually considering image and see how images are getting cancelled if we employ uh, if we use this kind of structure uh, in a proper way right so the i arm will definitely give you a signal component and image component similarly the q arm also will give a signal component and an image component right so this is a first understanding now uh, if this is the case what is the input signal coming so i am just looking at uh, i am having a look at the uh, input rf signal which is available at the input of this receiver uh, right so uh, there uh, here I can I, uh, here what I'll uh, consider is I'll consider for input signal for input signal uh, I'll assume that LSI and for the image I'll consider HSI. If that is the case, uh, let me locate uh, the the local oscillator first. This is omega LO. So here at minus omega LO. Uh, this is a local oscillator now if our input signal if it is lsi uh, input should be actually on uh, this side so i'll consider input uh, at this point this is input now for image since it is hsi i should consider image on uh, the left side so this is the image component this is at a frequency of omega im uh, same thing is applicable uh, again this side this is minus omega im and this is minus omega c right now what we will do is we will uh, can we will do this uh, operation along with uh, signal and image so let me mark the amplitudes also since it is a pure cosine wave I'll mark it as half the local oscillator frequency. Uh, I'm I have just drawn for the uh, the local oscillator. I just marked for the in phase uh, component. Now the signal is having an amplitude A, and say image is having an amplitude B. Image is having an amplitude of B. So this is our input to this image reject receivers, right? So it will have uh, at the input you will have both um, signal as well as the image both has to be considered. So this is how uh, the input we will consider the input at the uh, this is the input actually at the input of this image reject receiver or uh, this combination. This is what I am considering as of now as the front end of an image reject receiver. Now uh, what we can do is probably I think if we start we will not be able to finish it okay let me uh, do one thing yeah so if you look at uh, uh, look at this architecture you will have uh, cos omega lot and sin omega lot component then your input signal itself will be uh, rotated clockwise or anti clockwise depending on what um, local oscillator is coming in right so what we'll do is we'll perform the entire operation uh, using uh, a 3d graph where i can locate uh, the locate the frequency, the real, and the imaginary components. So this I'll uh, take as uh, the omega, the frequency axis, and this I'll uh, consider as the imaginary uh, 
and this as my real axis right so uh, in order to see how uh, how the spectrum is getting evolved uh, from both i i uh, i arm and q arm uh, we will consider signal and image separately right that means uh, say at the input side okay now this is my input now at the output here uh, out at this point at this point what i'll get is since for the input signal it is lsi uh, the component here will be omega lo minus omega c that is the uh, intermediate frequency component omega uh, omega lo minus omega c will be the intermediate frequency component uh, so your omega if will be here right uh, now uh, that will be having an amplitude of uh, a by 2 and on the other side also it is a by 2 both is both are having real amplitudes right so <clears throat> what i will what i am trying to plot here is we know that this is the structure you will have an i signal component and q signal component i image component and uh, sorry this is q image are you guys there following all right okay okay yeah so what we'll do uh, from here is i want to look at the spectrum at this point the if spectra which is emerging out of this so that will be having both i signal and q signal uh, i image and q image so uh, signal components will be uh, drawn in a separate graph and image components will be drawn in a separate graph and then we will see how images are getting cancelled right so what i'll do is i'll just give this as an exercise for you you guys try and see whether you are able to uh, uh, so that the uh, the aim is actually to cancel image and to retain signal right so see whether it is possible or not or if if that has to be done what modification actually we have to do in the structure and the architecture in order to get signals alone and images uh, to be cancelled right i hope i uh, made uh, my statement clear so uh, why i am not starting now is if we start also we have to stop in between so the continuity is required for this so i am just winding up here for this session uh, we'll continue in the next class meanwhile you you guys try how you can get the spectrum out of this and see how images can be cancelled and signals can be restored so thank you so much for joining uh, today's class